three things that I have learned as an actress that have significantly impacted my life and my relationships. What's up guys, I'm Rachel Brooksmith. I'm an actress, producer, inspirational speaker, and co-founder at Relationship Renegades. And I really wanted to do this video because I've learned so much as an actress that has really helped my life, these really powerful life lessons that I really wanted to share with you guys. So if you have any comments, please leave them below. Also, if you think anyone could benefit from this video, please share it with them. And if you want more content like this, make sure and subscribe. My intention is always to create hopefully really entertaining, inspirational, as well as educational content that really helps entertain, elevate, and uplift the collective consciousness. So here we go. Oh, also, if we're just meeting for the first time and you want to learn more about the films I've been in, make sure and just go to my IMDb. The link is in the description as my website and all that other stuff. All right, here we go. So number one is really how to be a good listener. So one of the coolest things I learned from one of my many acting coaches is that acting is really just great listening and then responding. So in order to be a good actor, you really have to be a really freaking great listener. And this is an acting exercise that I've utilized in my life as well as what we teach to some of our coaching clients to help them drop into a state of active listening. So this is an exercise you can use, try it out, make it a game for yourself. It's pretty fascinating how much uh, we're not actually listening on a regular basis. And this game, this exercise can really help you be more aware of that. So what you do is you listen to the other person so much so that you can repeat back what they're saying to you. So whatever their last sentence was, you would have to listen so hard that you could repeat that back to them before you responded. So this is an acting exercise that when I'm like learning auditions, I literally learned the lines so well so that basically I know other people's lines. Like if I'm listening to them, I could repeat back their last line that they said before I responded. And it's crazy when you do this, it really changes the way that you respond. In acting, uh, there's so much more authenticity and groundedness from that response. And also in life, if you're really, really, really listening to the other person, it literally will change the way that you respond. Because most of the time what happens both in acting and in life is we're thinking about what we're going to say next or we're thinking about our rebuttal to what they're saying. So we're not actually really listening. So this concept of really courageously listening, not even thinking about what you're going to say next, but really just seeking to understand, which is actually a theme at Relationship Renegades. We actually have wearable reminders for you. They're actually right below here as well that actually say seek to understand. And I really believe that so much of our conflict and misunderstandings come from this whole thing that so many times we so badly want to be understood that we're forgetting to seek to understand. And if we could come from that place first of really listening, of really seeking to understand, then man, <laughs> the world would be such a different place. Okay, number two. Number two is really that rejection is only rejection if you perceive it that way. And really how perception is everything. But especially when it comes to quote unquote rejection, this is a question I get asked all the time. Like, how do you deal with so much rejection? And as an actress, yes, you do have to deal with a lot of rejection you know, because you are auditioning. And there's a common phrase that says you get about one yes for every 100 no's. So literally you could audition 100 times getting no's for every one yes, which is pretty crazy odds. But for a lot of times it's pretty true. It's pretty accurate. Um, so here's the thing. If I perceived anytime I didn't book the job as rejection, I probably would no longer be acting because I couldn't handle it at that point. But I don't view it as rejection because every time I'm auditioning, I'm my goal is, is just to book the room, just to get 1% better, just to practice my craft. And when you come from that standpoint, when you're just like, I do this because I love it, and I just want to continue to get better. And I know that every time I practice, I will get better, especially when I'm practicing with great coaches, great partners that challenge you, that inspire you, that uplift you. Like with every time you practice, you will improve. But if you're only auditioning to just like, to just book the job, well then if you don't get it, you're going to be devastated because that was your only intention. That was your only purpose. So I think relating this to life, is that understanding is that however we view something, whatever the story is behind what's going on, will change the way 
we feel about the situation, it will also alter the way that we continue on in life, right? Because again, if I review, if I viewed every <laughs> rejection that I got as actual rejection, then I, I probably wouldn't be able to do this for my life and I'm in it for the long game. So if you're in something for the long haul, I think it's so important to have really healthy relationships with what's going on and to create an empowering story. So again, this is just my choice. I choose to view it that way because I love acting and I want to do it for the rest of my life. It lights me up, it's my passion, it brings me so much joy. And so I, I need to create healthy, empowering stories behind everything that I do so that I can continue, so that it doesn't hold me back. Um, let me know if that makes sense, guys. Again, leave questions in the comments. It's a pretty deep topic and it can relate to so many facets in life. But just really understand that we're not always seeing things as they are. We're seeing things as we are and our perception in which we're viewing something is literally creating our reality. And the cool thing is, is that you are the creator of your reality. If it, something is disempowering you, you have the power and the opportunity to change that story so that it actually does empower you and helps you move forward rather than hold you back. All right, number three. Number three is a life mantra that I kind of made up <laughs> to help me and it's helped me so much. Literally, I think it's the reason why I've been able to star in so many feature films and be a part of so many TV shows uh, and so many incredible experiences that so many people told me I was crazy for ever thinking I'd be able to do as a kid. And that is to let go of outcomes I can't control and focus on the fact that every time I take action, I win. Every time I do the brave thing, I always win. And again, that is a rule I made up for my life. That is a mantra. But because of that mantra, it has enabled me to do pretty terrifying things, like move to LA when I was 18 and I didn't know anybody, didn't know what I was doing. I was just following a dream. And I just had this, this rule for my life that I, I could not control the outcome. I couldn't control what happened, but all I could control is if I did the brave thing. And knowing that if I just continue to do the brave thing and I continue to learn and I continue to grow, it will lead down this path of a lot of confidence and, and self-love and self-trust because anytime we have these, these deep desires and we make these commitments to ourselves of like, I'm gonna do that. But then maybe we justify reasons why we, we shouldn't do that or we can't do that so we don't do it. Well, then we just kind of broke a promise to ourselves. Anytime you break a promise to anyone, what happens? You kind of lose trust in them. So there's been different chapters in my life when I made all these crazy commitments to myself that I actually couldn't keep. I made it really hard for myself to win. <laughs> and so I lost a lot of self-trust as well as self-love. And I found myself in this really dark chapter that I had to work really hard to get out of. And then I really realized that I was making it so hard for myself to win. And I think one of the biggest things that have helped me the most is make it so easy for yourself to win on a daily basis so that you can build more self-love, more self-trust, more confidence. And every time you do that, then you can make bigger and bigger commitments and expand and grow. Um, but it's this whole concept of baby steps, right? So like if I say I'm going to, I used to have all these commitments, like I'm going to meditate for an hour and then I'm going to run 10 miles and then I'm going to, you know, a bunch of acting classes or I'm going to do all these things that like I couldn't, it would be so hard to actually do that on a regular basis, especially if I've never done it before. And then I learned this whole concept of baby steps and being like, anytime I make a new commitment to myself, I make it really easy for myself to win. So again, part of that making it easy is to let go of outcomes you can't control and focus on the things that you can do. And one of the only things that I can control is if I take brave action and taking brave action could look like, okay, you know what, tomorrow, because I've never meditated before, I'm just giving an example of, you know, something that someone could be going through right now. I'm going to start meditating for 60 seconds a day. Right? And I'm going to take brave action every day to start doing that. But here's the thing. <laughs> when you start meditating for 60 seconds a day, usually you will be able to keep that promise to yourself. And it will feel so good. It will start to feel so good after a while that may, then you're going to want to do it for two minutes and then three minutes and then four minutes. And then before you know it, you're meditating for 20 minutes a day. And that's just a really um, simple example of what can happen from committing to baby steps and committing to doing the brave thing but making it so easy for yourself to win. So if you're not used to living very courageously, start making it really easy for yourself. Take baby steps of courageous action 
And here's the thing, every time you do something new that is brave, you build more courage, you build more confidence. And it's this ripple effect. It's literally just like a muscle. The more that you use it, the more it grows, right? You wouldn't just go to the gym for the first time and start like bench pressing 500 pounds. <laughs> you know, you probably start with five, you get stronger, then go to 10 and 15 and so on and so on. Same thing in life. If you haven't gone out of your comfort zone a lot recently, start small, you know, start by saying hi to strangers every day and committing to that and like holding yourself accountable and setting up systems. Like I help people in our group coaching and private coaching. I help them create these like, um, these posters on their wall and track how many times they did what they said they were going to do, right? How many, like, did you do the brave thing today and track how many days in a row you did the brave thing and you kept your promises to yourself. And then at the end of it, after a certain amount of points, you like big time reward and celebrate yourself. I mean, you're celebrating yourself every day that you do this. And when you don't, you also have a lot of compassion for yourself because again, you're starting something new, you're learning, you're growing and you're asking powerful questions like, okay, I didn't do it today. What could I do to help myself do it tomorrow? You know, do I need to ask for support? Do I need more accountability? Whatever I need to do, right? But learning how to ask yourself powerful questions. So that was a really long-winded answer, long-winded answer to that one, but I hope that made sense. Please let me know if you guys have any questions and comments and there is so much more to share. Um, but I wanted to keep this one right around three. So if you guys want to learn more lessons, more things that I've learned as an actress that have helped me in my life and in my relationships, um, please let me know. I'll do more videos like this. Um, and when I say life and relationships, I want to be super clear that most all of life is relationships. This is something that I, I don't think I really understood when I was younger that everything in life is relationships. One of the reasons why we also created the company called Relationship Renegades was because our mission is to help people co-create a world where healthy relationships are the new norm. Relationships with themselves, relationships with others, relationships with the world around them, relationships to God, source, universe, whatever that means to you. But everything is in relationship, right? I have a relationship with my body. I have a relationship with food. I have a relationship with nature. I have a relationship with my friend, with my partner, with my family, with my with everyone. Everything is in relationship. And the whole renegade portion is, you know, a lot of people have these stigmas around relationships that it's like, oh, they're so hard or they're so complicated or or the old ball and chain or whatever that is, right? And we really want to change the norm, like change that stereotype that no, actually relationships, healthy relationships are a fundamental part of a healthy life. In fact, they've done so many studies when it comes to mental health and having healthy relationships is at the core of having really good mental health. And if you don't have those healthy relationships, it's really difficult to move through life because we need that support. We're wired for community, literally <laughs> since the beginning of time, we, we, we survived and thrived as tribes, as communities. And I think, especially in this digital age, we've gotten pretty far from what it used to be and hence why we're having so many problems. So the more we can learn how to have a healthier relationship with ourselves, with others and with the world around us, life gets, <laughs> you feel so much more supported. I know for most of my life, you know, I had huge dreams to become an actress and somehow, some way, and I feel so freaking lucky that I actually achieved those dreams and continue to dream big and, and work hard on producing and, and acting, starring in really cool upcoming films. But I think the biggest thing that I, I didn't prioritize was my relationships because I was so driven, I was so focused on creating and achieving. I totally didn't prioritize my relationships. And even though I was achieving some really big things like dream come true roles, I felt really lonely and really unsupported. And here's the thing, it's like jobs come and go, money comes and goes, a lot of things in life come and go. <laughs> those really core healthy relationships, those like long-term friendships, long-term relationships, family relationships, hopefully, you know, those are things that are with you through the best of the best, but also through the worst of the worst. And life truly is just so much more rich and fulfilling and full when you can look around and share those beautiful experiences as well as when you're going through challenging times that you know that you have people to lean on and that you show up for people when they're going through difficult times as well. It's such a, such a huge aspect of, of fulfillment and, and joy and peace uh, to feel supported and also to be able to support other people. And, and as an actress, I mean, <laughs> everything is in relationship. When I really started doing 
this deep inner work and healing my childhood wounds and learning how to communicate authentically and courageously and bravely and studying psychology and majoring in it. Like that was such a game changer when it came to becoming a better actress and artist because the study of acting is literally the study of human behavior. It's like why we do what we do and why we do what we don't do and why some people do some things and some people don't do some things and in character study and just the study of people. And so all of this work, literally, like whether you're, um, whether you are an, an actor or in a creative entrepreneur, whether you are an actor or an actress or somehow in the entertainment industry and or you're not, it doesn't really matter. All of these principles are so powerful for life, um, but they can help you in, in both fields. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Uh, super excited to connect with you. If you click the link in uh, the description, you'll have linked on my social media, as well as our private group that we have for relationship renegades, as well as I believe the link to apply for private coaching. We do private coaching and group coaching where we help people one-on-one -on -one and in groups and also at upcoming retreats. Really, really, really understand this and so much more on such a deep level. And we're just all about having as much fun as possible, but also going as deep as possible. I would love to connect with you more and help support you on your journey. So if you're interested, please click any of the links below. Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully I see you in our private group as well as potentially in some of our group coaching and upcoming retreats. I do have three new films coming out, one of which is Legend of the White Dragon. I play one of the main hero characters in that film and I'm so excited about it. It's so good, you guys. The other one is called Alien Country. I play one of the main characters in that. I play this like really southern feisty uh, character named Melanie. And another one is called Space Hunters. That's another kind of action sci-fi film. So all of them actually are kind of like action sci-fi. Um, some are more comedic than others. But anyways, just so excited, so grateful. I feel so blessed to be living my childhood dream. And I just want to help as many people as possible know that they can do the same and that there is no there. Like there's no there that you're ever going to get to where it's, it's over, you're done. Life is this like lifelong commitment to growth, to learning. And once you get to a goal or a dream, you're just going to have another one, right? So it's learning how to really enjoy the journey, have the, have the big goals, have the dreams, but then also kind of let them go and really learn how to enjoy the process because again, there is no there. And if you think that that goal or dream is going to solve all your problems and make you happy, I think you're going to get there and you're going to be um, pretty surprised. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Again, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help. Uh, so much love and I'll see you on the next one.